Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. I work with animals because I have a passion for them and I never really look at them as money, but there's certainly been plenty of projects that have made me the money I've needed to grow the collection to where it is today. I'm gonna to take a look at each of those projects and tell you how they impacted BHB. And guess what, guys? We have our new shirts out and we're gonna give you a chance to win a free shirt. So make sure to listen later in the show. You're watching Snake Bites. I tell people all the time, you should never work with animals for the money. You should always do it for the love of the animals. But unfortunately, when you're keeping a lot of animals, you need to make money to support your habit. I've told people a million times, if I bred snakes for a living, I would have retired 10 years ago. I do it because I love it so much. I wanna share with you guys that path that has brought me to where I am today. And it really started with animals like Sunshine right here, the albino Burmese python. I was 17 years old and working at a pet shop and the first real investment in the reptile trade were albino Burmese pythons. They were selling for $1,600 a piece. That's right, $3,200 a pair. And I scrounged up every penny I had and somehow convinced my mom to let me buy a pair of albino Burmese pythons. That's really what started to launch my career as BHB Reptiles. When I was 18 years old, I produced 22 albino Burmese pythons and some hats in my mom's basement. Made over $40,000 that year. That's really what started my entire collection. That money, income, was what it took to buy the next projects. But I tell you what, it all started with the albino Burmese. Let's take a look at what I did from there. Which animal does Brian think has the best chances of being the biggest investment in the future? A. Brazilian rainbow mutations, B. Carpet python mutations, or C. Blue tongue skink mutations? Go ahead and answer down below in the comments and check back later in the show to see if you have the correct answer. For this week's Reptile Report and Snake Bites TV Spotlight, we're going to be highlighting Reptile Forums UK. Go ahead and hit the URL down below or click on the link in the description. Over the next few years, I continued to breed the albino Burmese python and added a few other mutations to my Burmese group. I was also breeding corn snakes and cane snakes and even boa constrictors to continue to grow my collection. But the truth is, every now and then, you need a shot in the arm to really explode your collection. And that's when I was down in Orlando at the National Breeders Expo and I came across this animal right here, an aneuthristic Honduran milk snake. Now, aneuthristic is a recessive mutation and it reduces the red in the animal. And it's interesting because milk snakes are predominantly red and I just fell in love with it. It was on a table of a guy named Matt Schramm and it was the only one available. He wanted $2,500 for it, which was a lot of money for me back then, but I scrounged it up and I bought that animal. Again, it was the first one that was ever sold and a guy in Texas named Dave Doherty was the one that had produced it. In the next couple years, I was fortunate enough to produce little baby aneuthristic Hondurans, and they sold for $1,000 per baby. Now that's a lot for a little baby colubrid, but more importantly, what it did was open the door to my next Honduran project. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that was. And that's when the next project happened, which was really one of the biggest projects that BHB was ever known for, because it was a very first animal. A friend of mine over in Germany named Stefan Broghammer from MS Reptilian gave me a call and said that he had some baby albino Honduran milk snakes. So again, sometimes when you're known for buying things like the anathristic Honduran, it'll open up doors to buy animals like this, which are totally gorgeous. Now these were the very first ones that ever came into the country, and I was hoping to get about $1,000 a baby, which was similar to what I was getting for the anathristics. But the reptile market was just starting to explode, and by the time I produced those little baby, beautiful albino Hondurans, people were willing to pay $3,000 a baby. Now again, I had all these projects working and it really jaunted me to the next level. I was making great money, which gave me the ability to grow my collection. Again, I can't express enough how it was never about the money. It was always about being able to work with even more animals. But again, when you start to get known for buying interesting things, 
people that have interesting things start to contact you because they know you're a potential buyer. And then the next project came along, which I still am working with to this day and love it. You guys want to see what it is? Let's go check it out. Now I had been working with Western hognose snakes for several years and I've just always thought they were absolutely adorable with that little pug nose. And the way they behave was really unique. Now they're a colubrid snake, but they're not a constrictor. So they act completely different than the corn snakes and king snakes that I used to work with. So I just always loved them. But that's when something really interesting happened. I got a call from a guy named Richard Evans down in Lubbock, Texas, and he had captured the first albino western hognose snake. He raised it up and produced the first captive born albino western hogs, just like this little guy here. And because he had heard that I had been buying projects like the Anuthristic Honduran and Albino Honduran, he thought that I'd be the perfect guy to buy into his new project. Now he only wanted $600 a piece for little baby albinos, and I thought that was way too cheap. So we agreed on a price that I bought a handful of animals and decided to move the price up to $15 $1,500 a baby. When I started producing, there was a line of people to buy them at $1,500. I literally couldn't produce enough to meet the demand. Now projects like the Anuthristic and Albino Honduran and even the Albino Hognose and still the Albino Burmese were doing big things for BHB because that was all infusing money into the growth of all the cool animals I was going to get into. But I tell you what, the biggest shot in the arm was coming for BHB and it came in the way of a ball python. I want to take you into the python room and explain that story and tell you the whole thing. Let's go. Now I've been infatuated with ball pythons ever since I can remember. As a matter of fact, my first memory as a kid was of a ball python in a local zoo. Now I've told that story a bunch, but it's really stuck with me my whole life. And when I started keeping snakes, the second animal I bought was a ball python. Now unfortunately back then the majority of the animals that came in were wild caught adults and did really poorly in captivity and most people really considered them garbage animals and very few people wanted to breed them. It wasn't until they started to captive hatch them over in West Africa that people started to realize how incredible they were and that's when the color mutation started. Now I was fortunate enough to get in on the ground floor of projects like ghost ball pythons, pastel ball pythons and a few others, but it wasn't until I got the call from one of my sources in West Africa that there was a really interesting snake in Abome Benin that they had never seen before. Now this was before the internet, so they couldn't just email me a picture and say, hey, what do you think? They had to explain it to me, and they just said it was really reduced pattern and really beautiful, and again, they were really selling me on it. Now, this was the most expensive snake that I ever purchased, and it's really hard to sell send your money over to West Africa, not even knowing what the animal looks like, but they assured me I was going to be blown away. As a matter of fact, I didn't even know if it was a male or a female because no one could sex them over there. But hey, I sent the money off and a couple weeks later, I got my very first pinstripe ball python. Well, hey, it's just getting it is only part of the battle. I had to raise it up and sure enough, it was a male. And when I bred that male out, oh my God, half the babies came out pinstripe. It's amazing to think about it that every pinstripe ball python you see out there originated from that one animal that came from Abome. Now babies were selling for $25,000 a piece. That was huge for BHB and really that's what bought this building and did all my expansion into these animals. So pinstripes really were the foundation of BHB and where we are today. And if it wasn't for them, I certainly wouldn't be where I am now. So that's the future of the biggest animals that BHB has worked with. Now again, I want to stress two things. Number one, there's been many, many animals I've worked with that have been really incredible, that have helped me along my path. And two, it's never ever been about the money. It's always about doing what I love. But I want to share with you guys now what I think the future of BHB and over the next few years, what's going to drive our expansion to the next level. You guys want to see those projects? Let's check them out. Now before we get into some of the cool projects that I think will dictate the future of BHB, I wanted to make sure you guys understand that each animal you produce when you're a business 
adds to the cost of the entire operation. So even a $20 snake helps you pay your bills and helps keep the wheels turning. It's not all about these tent pole projects, but certainly those projects really define the future of businesses. And we've been very fortunate to have some incredible ones that I've already shown you in the past, and we're really excited about some of the ones coming up in the future. And that's what I'm going to show you guys right now. There's a really new project of ball pythons that came out of West Africa that's really taken the whole industry by storm right now, and that's the bamboo project. This is a pastel bamboo right here, and I think it's going to be a really solid project for us in the next coming years. Now, we have a handful of males that are ready to breed this next season, including this pastel bamboo. But what's interesting is we have a super male that's really going to be one of our stars. Now, the super bamboo is in the blue-eyed leucistic complex, as you can see right here, but they still have some patterning, so you can really tell that they're a super bamboo. But again, when I breed this guy to a normal, all of the babies are going to be bamboo, so I can get them into all kinds of mutations and really rock it. Now, these guys are going to be really good for us over the next couple years, but I want to share two projects that I really think will be amazing for the future here, and ones that we're pioneering from the very start. I've showed you guys the Sunset Project before, but that's certainly going to be a big part of the next five or six years of BHB. It's a recessive mutation that I bought about eight years ago and finally proved it out last year. This is our second year of production and the demand has been through the roof. And I can understand why because they're really beautiful. And again, I've always said what really the sunset brings to the table is the fact that it has oranges and red in it. That's something that we don't see in a lot of ball python mutations. So adding that color to each of the mutations out there is just going to make every mutation that much more interesting. I can't wait to see what happens when we start producing mutations of sunsets. And then the last project that I think is going to be so big for us, if it proves out, is the scaleless head animal. Now I bought an animal out of West Africa that was missing a bunch of scales on its head just like this guy. Now I thought it was going to be a recessive mutation. There used to be a ball python called the derma ball that was almost 80 or 90 percent scaleless. I thought maybe this was a low expression animal of a derma ball and that maybe if I bred it I could eventually produce higher scaleless animals. To my amazement when I bred that scaleless head animal to a normal half the babies came out scaleless head. Now our hopes are there's going to be a super version and that super version will be predominantly or all scaleless. The good news is we have a clutch of four eggs cooking right now that's due to hatch the end of September. We may hit our odds. It's a 25% chance. So hey, let's hope we hit it. I think these three projects will really drive the future of BHB and the scaleless project alone I think is one of the most exciting ones. Now I know a lot of people don't like the scaleless animals because they they think it's some abomination. But the truth is, every mutation out there is an abomination. These guys aren't in the wild, and I've raised scaleless snakes for years, and they thrive like I can't even tell you. So regardless, I am so excited about every project I work with, but you can see the future is bright, and I want to take you guys along for the ride. I told you guys earlier that we got the new Snake Bites TV Medusa shirts in. I tell you what, I'm really digging them and I want you guys to get some for free. I'm going to pick three random people that click the link in the description that says click to tweet. That's all you have to do. You click to tweet and I'm going to pick three lucky winners. I hope you guys win. What are you doing? Just finishing up this wallet. Why? I got to supplement my income somehow so I make a little extra cash just making stuff out of duct tape. You can sell stuff made out of duct tape for money. Yeah, I, there's all sorts of different kinds. You can make all sorts of cool stuff. I even made this wallet out of snakeskin duct tape. So it's kind of cool. I can get like 20 bucks a piece for somebody. It's huh. huh. an interesting idea. Hey, did you see Sam selling duct tape wallet? Yeah, dude, those things are dope, man. She made my daughter one. She loves it, dude. She's making a killing, though. They're like 20 bucks a piece. Yeah, yeah, I don't blame her, man. Dude, it's I, good. Should, I should do something like that. Yeah. Have you ever seen the village people? Sam, I thought I should let you know. I'm gonna do a duct tape business too. Well, that's kind of b I've been doing this for 10 years. I sell a lot of wallets. You're just trying to like edge in on no, my territory you don't, here? No, not have to worry. I'm not gonna sell wallets at all. I'm gonna go after like an entirely new market. What are you gonna make? You'll see. I think you'll like it.
Sam, did you get a chance to go through the rest of those corn snakes? Yes, I did. Yep, absolutely. Hey guys, I got a text from Josh to me up here. What's, what's up? I don't know. He said he wanted to show us something. Probably something stupid. What do you guys think? Oh. <laughs> what is this? Duct tape clothing. The Josh line. Holy oh God, dude. What? This, this, this looks awesome. ridiculous. Put some clothes on. Where are you guys going? This is going to catch on. All right, guys, so there's a lot of questions that have been kind of bothering me lately. For example, if Superman can't get hurt by bullets, why does he duck when someone throws a gun at him? Why isn't the word phonetics spelled the way it sounds? And why don't they make cat food that's flavored like mice? It's weird questions, I know, but they bug me. So I want to know what questions bug you. Leave a comment below and let us know. Which animal does Brian think has the best chances of being the biggest investment in the future? If you said C, blue tongue skink mutations, you're 100% correct. Good job. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. These projects meant a lot to BHB and I'm really excited about the future. Make sure to check out that click to tweet thing and win a free shirt. And if you want to follow any of my animal adventures, make sure to hit me up over on Facebook and Twitter at Snake Bites TV. Till next week, you've been watching Snake Bites. the next project happened, which is really one of the biggest projects that BHB was ever known for, because it was a very first animal. A friend of mine over in Germany named Stefan Broghammer from MS.